While gleefully grinding my way through 2D dark fantasy souls like There Is No Light, I found myself drawing consistent parallels to some of the greatest games to come out in the last 10 years, punishing button-smashing combat as frenetic yet smooth and satisfying as was Hades, an enormous subterranean world as painstakingly steeped in hauntingly beautiful detail and mind-bending lore as was Bloodborne's, and a visual aesthetic soaked in the same level of creativity and thematic variety as was Hollow Knight. Now, having sufficiently overhyped publisher hype trained Digital's latest release and developer Zellart's first do note that every diamond has its imperfections, but when put under the make of the microscope, there is no light shine so ironically bright that this game's few faults are easy to overlook. Let's start with story. After an unnamed, unexplained global catastrophe, humanity's remnants sought shelter underground and in the darkness found guidance in the form of a mysterious godlike hand creature that appears every few years to take chosen newborns beyond the gates of humanity's capital for I'm sure a perfectly pleasant non-sacrificial purpose. While many parents view this quote ascension ceremony as an honorable necessity, our nameless protagonist does not. Well, not quite nameless I suppose, for after rebelling against the stealing of his child and being promptly stricken down by the hand's fanatical guards, the Solar Core, our the protagonist is revived by a malevolent reaper named Samdi, who takes to calling us Blondie. United by hate for the Hand, Samdi and Blondie set out to undo the Hand's rule for decidedly different purposes. While all this mystical fascism lore is as disturbing as it is delicious, There Is No Light's actual narrative sequence of events, aka plot, is surprisingly straightforward if a little sporadic. After a rushed opening act, Blondie just kind of spends the next 20 or so hours running furiously from point A to Z, killing everything in his path, while Samdi facilitates this near genocidal rampage with relish. If at this point these characters are starting to give you big berserk and or death note energy, you're not the only one. The cackling chaotic Samdi is about as interesting and amusing as was the Shinigami Ryuk. <laughs> but the stoic and unspeaking Blondie is ultimately a poor man's guts, doing little to evolve as the game goes on. Oh, and fittingly, there is no light. <laughs> the text-based dialogue, meanwhile, is a strength if only because there's so dang much of it. Over 1,000 optional side conversations that do wonders to flesh out and breathe life into There Is No Light's incredible world, making each non-combat hub that much richer to explore and experience. But you're not here for non-combat, are you? No, you're a Soulsborne masochist, here for over 70 types of horrifying enemies, ranging from spiders to cannibals to whatever that is. Luckily, you'll have four unlockable weapons, each with its own fighting style and skill set with which to do battle. To activate skills, Blondie must accumulate rage by hitting enemies, which when coupled with both a healing system that revolves around interrupting attacks and no stamina bar whatsoever, encourages a super aggressive approach to encounters. One catch, on activating its special ability, each weapon will break and go on cooldown. But fear not, each weapon is instantly replaced when this happens, allowing you to worry less about weapon swapping micromanagement and more on kicking solar core ass and having your ass probably kicked in return. Really, you will die often in this game, and in being revived, throw up more than Eric Andre. But the Souls-like checkpoint system in There Is No Light is very generous, cutting down on backtracking and routinely, mercifully spawning you on the edge of a boss fight. And what would a Souls-like be without bosses? There Is No Light sports a very diverse assortment of hellish monstrosities, some of which feature mechanics as inventive as they are infuriating. But as much as I would like to say this game's big bads reach the highs of genre classics, I can't get over the wildly inconsistent difficulty swings. Really, on multiple occasions I ripped right through major boss fights first time, and the very next would cleave me right through 20 times in return with nary a scratch on him. If you find yourself stuck, as I occasionally did, don't feel too bad about dropping down to Traveler difficulty, which despite this ominous warning will not in fact restart your entire playthrough. Just note that Traveler difficulty doesn't really give any enemies less health or make them do less damage. All you really get in return is an extra healing seed to start each run, and the ability to take Samdi up on his healing seeds and mid-level checkpoints without sacrificing karma, which impacts the way certain NPCs treat you in-game. As for playability, I encountered no bugs and just a single crash during my over 20 hours with the game. No complaints about the camera or controls either. Due to a dead controller, I actually used mouse and keyboard the whole time and never felt hindered. I was less impressed with the game's UI, specifically its checkpoint menu, which I found cumbersome to navigate and unhelpful as far as determining where the heck each of these freaky Venus flytrap things would spit me out. But this small complaint aside, There Is No Light is absolutely still worth it at 25 bucks and should keep fans of the genre enraptured for its 30 or so hour playtime. If you're not a fan of hard games, I still humbly suggest checking out There Is No Light if only to redefine what you think pixel art is capable of. Creative use of lighting and perspective only further amplify this game's already stellar visual aesthetic that when coupled with its exceptional, often unsettling sound design makes for a truly mesmerizing audiovisual experience. Now, 
as per music, I went into There Is No Light expecting nothing but down-tuned death metal, per the game's trailers. In reality, the game's soundtrack is incredibly restrained and atmospheric, relying less on distortion and more on deep soundscapes to blanket its world in oppressive gloom. thereby making There Is No Light's infrequent spurts of uplifting beautiful melody stand out all the more. After averaging up our micrometrics, There Is No Light earns an excellent aggregate mega score of 3.93 out of 5 and is my favorite game of the year to date.